Greetings all, Last Outrider here with my next Black Legion video. But first, a quick Q&A session. If you don't want to hear it, skip ahead about a minute and I'll be back on to Warp Crafted Weapons. Why this video series? Because I think the story of the Black Legion proves conclusively that Warhammer 40k is ending and the Age of Sigmar is beginning. This is my 40k companion video series to what I made with the End Times and Age of Sigmar video series. The tale of the Black Legion is the tale of the end of the Imperium. That's what I believe, and when I'm done with it, I think you'll believe it too. Second, why do I like Age of Sigmar? Or at least support its creation? Because I am tired of griefers in 40k. After two decades of playing the game, I can safely tell you I've had enough of rule arguing. I've had enough of point counting and min maxing army lists and people interpreting the rules in ways purely so that they make their army strong and everybody else's army weak. I'm tired of having to wait for FAQs to come out just to say that the exploits some person thought of for a rule is officially bullshit. Most notably, uh, the new Eldar FAQ that just came out, getting rid of all of the crap Eldar players have been doing. When these rules get simplified, that's going to be gone. And I think I'll finally be able to just sit down and play 40k in a streamlined manner where you can focus on a storyline game and not have what people jokingly call competitive play. Because Warhammer 40k is not a combat simulator. It's an RPG. Okay? It always was an RPG. It was never, ever designed to be a combat simulator war game. It never was. So I'm looking forward to the day that it embraces the RPG aspect again. That is, unless, you know, X-Wing and TIE Fighter rule the day and Games Workshop just decides, fuck it, we're done with Space Marines. It's time for flyers for the rest of the time. But back on to the story, shall we? Yes, we shall. We're going on to Warpcrafted Weapons. During his wars within the Eye of Terror, Abaddon discovered many powerful artifacts of chaos. Objects that had been lost to the warp or were fashioned by the dark gods themselves. Tales tell of the crucible of lies, the last memory of the Euranthos, and the spine shiver blade, all stolen by the despoiler. Dozens of demonic weapons were found by the Black Legion in the depths of ancient ruins on warp-tainted worlds or the holds of broken ships, their rusting hulks drawn into the eye of terror by the tides of time and space. Each object was a deadly abomination against reality itself, hidden away or forgotten for a good reason. These devices and ancient weapons would become the tools with which Abaddon would craft his Black Crusades, tapping into their vile energies to return and further his own ambition. Abaddon used a cabal of the Thousand Sun Sorcerers and the demon Zingoran to follow the strands of time ever mindful of the future 
and fate of the Black Legion. Sifting through centuries of possible futures, Abaddon's keen mind was able to find the patterns in the warp and the signs of dark artifacts that would return and cause the tides of war to turn in his favor. Many of these forbidden relics were bartered for power or gifts to Abaddon's generals as tokens of favor. It became a mark of the despoilers' war bands and warlords that they would often carry Baroque demon weapons and devices of devastating power. The most maddening and majestic of these weapons were given to the Chosen. These foul and twisted warriors were among the few strong enough to bend the weapons' rebellious and hungering spirits to their own will. Those objects and esoteric artifacts deemed important to Abaddon's long war, however, were locked away, sealed from prying eye and jealous ambitions, lest they fall into the hands of his foes. And now a small little sidetrack story, a mark of shame and devotion. When Abaddon took control of the sons of Horus, he set about making a break with their previous history. Firstly, he cast off the name of their Primarch, rechristening the sons of Horus as the Black Legion, so that they could move beyond the failures of the heresy and repair their tarnished reputation. Whilst he kept the image of the Eye of Horus as the sole reminder of their origins, he ordered his warriors to paint their armor black and strike all their symbols of their past allegiances. This was to serve as both a mark of their shame and their devotion. An ancient symbol of mourning, the black honored their dead Primarch without speaking his name. Equally, it ensured it knew that the former sons of Horus would never forget that their Primarch had failed, and his failure must be drowned in the blood of his foes. More important than a mark of Abaddon's shame. The Black Legion's armor was part of his plan to unify the traitor legions for his great war against the Imperium. So potent a symbol has it become that few other warbands wear black armor. It was a clear message that told of a space marine's devotion to Abaddon and that he had forsaken all other oaths. There you go. So what are we going on to next time? This is going to be a short video because the next one's a big one. Abaddon's return to the Imperium. Until that happens, bye.